uh, doing, uh, you know, uh, uh, cinematic over-dramatization. Uh, these are court, real court cases that are coming from the Biden administration's Department of Justice recently. Uh, one of these cases describes a bordello that was in operation for 20 years in Mission, Texas, without anybody interfering or intervening, that specialized in bringing young Mexican girls over that border and gang pressing them into sexual slavery. They only just ended this last year uh, during the Biden administration uh, when one of the uh, victims managed to escape and get information out about it. Uh, this was just a horrendous case where uh, uh, the owner, a, a woman, and her uh, and her son uh, would just beat these women every day, uh, threaten to withhold children if they had any, unless they worked uh, the sex trade, and they they uh, did this uh, for 20 years. And what safeguards are in place to ensure unaccompanied minors aren't being trafficked? The biggest safeguard that was in place for the Trump administration was rapid DNA testing at the border. If you brought a kid over, you had to wait in line for a little while and then get your cheeks swabbed. Uh, and often people that were waiting in that line would just break and just say, hands up, okay, you got me. I'm not even going to go through this. That's not my kid. Uh, the Biden administration ended all rapid DNA testing on May 31st with no explanation, probably one of the most horrendous and terrible acts against humanity that I have seen yet from this administration. And in closing here, what can be done to solve this problem? Deter illegal immigration by deporting immediately families that come through. Mexico is an oil state. They're perfectly capable of taking care of these families, uh, just as as well as uh, uh, the United States or anyone else. They're uh, oil rich. Uh, they have a, uh, a modern economy. Uh, take them off the border and go take care of them in Mexico so that they don't try to cross the border into the United States and ultimately don't even try into Mexico uh, where there's sex trafficking there, too. That's. That's what it's all about, deterrence so that they stay home. Todd Benson, thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, so law enforcement actually leaked this footage. These, this footage is from Saturday, August 5th. And the reason that law enforcement leaked it is because they want the American people to understand the national security implications right now of Biden's open border policies. And so it's a, a exclusive to war room, Steve. And this is, we're breaking this story right now. And what you're seeing here, this is three gunmen that crossed over from Miguel Alamon, Mexico, and they crossed into Fronton, Texas, which is near Roma, Texas. Roma, Texas is a very small community right on the border. It has about 11,000 people for population. Fronton is even smaller. There's no gas station there. And Roma is the most violent area on the Southwest border. And you can see in these images, these gunmen have long guns, they have holsters for pistols, they have body armor on them. And keep in mind, in Mexico, they have some of the most restricted gun laws. They're not allowed, Mexican citizens are not allowed to have guns. They're not allowed to hold pistols. They're not allowed to have body armor. So you know that these are identified as cartel members. This is imagery is taken in Fronton, Texas. This is on the U.S. side. And what happened is Vortex was called, but they are coming from McAllen, Texas. So by the time they arrived on the scene, when these images were taken, these gunmen had escaped already into the United States. So now they're they're among the 1.5 million known gotaways that have that we have under the Biden administration. We have 25,000 just for the month of July known gotaways alone. And so now they're in Texas and they're armed and they're dangerous. And keep in mind, these are with the cartel. Um, cartel new generation, Jalisco new generation. That's the most violent cartel in Mexico. And what's happening in this area, why you're seeing this is in Miguel Alamán, you have a battle for control of territory among three different cartels. The Gulf cartel has controlled that area for the last 20 years. In the last two and a half years, the Northeast cartel
cartels started for control over that area. And last May, now you have the most violent cartel, Cartel Jalisco New Generation, has also joined the fight for control of that area. That's an area where there's a lot of smuggling that goes through. The only wall in Fronton is a, it's a short wall, very small. It's, it's not, it doesn't protect the area. So what is happening, you're seeing the national security implications right now that Biden's open policies are having on the American people. A lot of people in that area are leaving that area. We had an opportunity to talk to a very well-respected veteran, Doc Michael Vickers. He was briefing us yesterday on the state of affairs down here, and he was telling us the impact that Biden's immigration policies are having on the health care system, on the schools. He runs into immigrants almost on a daily basis on his own ranch. He was showing us photos of all the deceased immigrants that he and his wife run into themselves on their ranch. And so what's happening is the Biden administration is, is actually putting illegal immigrants' interests over the United States' interests. ...constitution site and posed as an underage girl when contacted. Police say all three men still wanted to meet up with the girl even after she told them she was underage. When the suspects showed up and knocked, they were met with several police officers instead. Seven Massachusetts state troopers won their COVID vaccine refusal case and must be reinstated with back pay. An independent arbitrator ruled in favor of the state troopers last Friday. They will receive full back pay dating from 2022. The arbitrator found that former Governor Charlie Baker and the state police department violated the troopers' rights to anti-discrimination and affirmative action. A press release said troopers weren't given reasonable accommodations for their sincerely held religious beliefs. Another sign that the remote work era is ending, a company that makes working from home possible is asking its employees to return to the office. For now, Zoom employees are only required to be on site two days a week. The new hybrid approach applies to people who live near one of its workplaces. Zoom says the structure is more effective for the company. The announcement follows similar ones from Google, Amazon, and Salesforce, despite pushback from employees. Zoom faces waning demand that caused it to cut about 15% of its staff this year. Drivers in Oregon are now doing something nearly all Americans are allowed to. They're pumping their own gas. Governor Tina Kotek signed a new law on Friday that reverses a ban on self-service dating back to 1951. Oregon becomes the 49th state to allow self-service. New Jersey is the only state left where attendants pump gas in a person's vehicle. While self-service is now allowed in Oregon, there are some restrictions. The law limits the number of self-service stations to 50% in the state's 16 most populous counties. And stations that offer full service cannot charge more than self-service stations. After the break, the U.S. military activates when Chinese and Russian ships get too close to the coast of Alaska. What are the dangers of incidents like this? And Elon Musk vows to pay legal fees for anyone who was fired because of a Twitter post. He says there's no limit to the funding. Find out why he is getting involved after the break.